Um, I would say that my faith is the central aspect of my life. Um, for me, it, it pretty much is my identity. My faith as a Catholic and, and in the wider world as a Christian definitely helps me in all aspects of my life. It's good to have just one place where we can all collectively go. So in that sense, it is really important. I think it helps with connecting with God. You're meeting with like-minded people. I think the new faith centre has been um, definitely an improvement on what we had before and means there's a lot more engagement between members of societies, not just in the Catholic society, but also between other faiths. There is one space on campus where people of all backgrounds, all faiths, know they can go to for just some. Even if it's just alone time, is an important reason to have such a place. You know, I have come and sat in the individual contemplation room when I needed to think away from the constant um, hubbub of the campus. And I don't think it's a church, or I don't think it's a mosque. Um, or a synagogue or anything else because all faiths use it and even people who don't belong to a faith come and use for example the meditation cave so I think it's a great space now and very much an interfaith space. And I, th I, think, I think the window actually captures that rather well I think it captures it rather beautifully you know it, 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 it allows difference but doesn't emphasize the boundaries. Like how are you going to have certain insignia that are necessary for certain religions but are forbidden in other religions. Things like this window kind of really nail how it is possible to over overcome those things. Are you happy with doing it? I love it. <laughs> I love it. It gives off its own light. What it provides to the room is quite significant. When this window wasn't here, it was very much, it was very uh, sort of lit up. But I think after putting that in, it gives a very nice ambience. Um, I think it's great. It's uh, really, it's fitting for the atmosphere. It creates a spiritual atmosphere definitely stands out. It's really calming, quite peaceful, so yeah. Well, the first thing that this wonderful window contributes is beauty. It's just gorgeous. But in addition, it enhances a space that is several different things for the LSE and for the campus. Obviously, this space is used for lots of different kinds of religious activities, but one of the things I do here every week is celebrate the Eucharist. and. Uh, the altar is placed in front of the window and one of the nice things for me as a priest is that when I elevate the chalice I see the window reflected in the silver uh, behind me. Well the window represents uh, the desert. The desert in particular has a lot of historical um, significance in um, the Abrahamic faiths um, and I think that's a really nice concept to bring into the Interfaith Centre. In different religious traditions there are stories of people going out from the city into the desert for a space for inner reflection. I think here we have in the city tremendous opportunities but we still need a space for inner reflection. The desert is the wilderness, it's the place set apart, it's where people go to connect with something beyond the chaos of their everyday life. The process of making a painting or making any artwork isn't, despite what people who aren't maybe familiar with the practice of making these things, it is not the carrying out of an idea. In other words, you do not illustrate a thought or a picture which you see in your mind. What you do is you engage in the materials and respond with them intuitively, almost physically. Immediately when you say desert, one thinks of all the deeply inappropriate things, like the cactus, or camels, or sand dunes, none of which are entirely relevant to what we're talking about, because of course it is a, it's a, it's a place, but it's also a metaphor. And uh, I was also aware that it shouldn't be a figurative or descriptive image, but nevertheless had to conjure up some of the atmosphere of what we were talking about. And I've actually spent some time in in the desert, and what one is very aware of is the heat you'll be aware of, everyone associates it, but also the cold. 
So if you apply that to painting, you come up with one of the basic features of painting, which is warm and cool colour. So therefore, it seemed to me that I could structure the painting between the hottest colour I could think of and the coldest colour I could think of. And just that very apparently simple structure was enough to set off the painting thinking, which led to the, led to the window. But what I did was to start off with watercolour. Watercolour has the transparency which hints at what glass might do. Um, so I was already thinking about transparencies, but none of that prepared me <laughs> for the extraordinary radiance and saturation of the glass. Mr Peters, Wilhelm and his wonderful family over uh, in Paderborn started showing me glass which was more intense in colour than I could imagine. And it's an astonishing, um, it's a really astonishing medium. And modern stained glass doesn't depend on the division of lead into these jigsaw patterns we're familiar with. It can be painted on and it can flow and it can produce just an astonishing effect. So that was, that was an enormously pleasing to see that. Um, don't forget, I'm a beginner. <laughs> so this is my first um, attempt at, stay, at, at stained glass, but I've, I've, I've found it really rewarding. So handing the responsibility for the actual making of the glass over um, feels a little bit uncomfortable, but actually that's what you have to do. You have to put yourself in their hands and trust them and trust their skills. So the window's curious because it's my, it's me, but it's not me, um, which is a relief often. <laughs>